You are listening to Making It in the Toy Industry, episode number 39. Welcome to Making It in the Toy Industry, a podcast for inventors and entrepreneurs like you. And now your host, Ajel Wade. Well, hey there, toy people. Welcome back. Before diving in today, I just have to say thank you to everyone that joined me for my virtual launch wrap party and my initial launch party to open and then close out enrollment for Toy Creators Academy. I know I've got avid listeners who joined me for both events, as well as friends who came to show support. So whether you signed up for the course this year or not, Just know that I'm grateful to have you as a listener of this podcast, and I'm going to keep giving you as much value and attention as I did before. And if you're just hearing about Toy Creators Academy for the first time, and it sounds like something you might be interested in, head over to toycreatorsacademy.com and join the waitlist. If you are a soon-to-be college grad or a recent college grad and you did not come from a toy-specific college program, listen up. I know a few of you were interested in Toy Creators Academy, but it just wasn't the right budget fit for where you're at right now. And I get it. Trust me, I have been there. There was a time when my weekly spending budget was $20, so trust me, I get it. And because I know where you're coming from, I'm building something specifically for you. So head over to thetoycoach.com forward slash grads to learn more. Okay, okay, enough talk and thanks. Let's get started in today's episode where we're going to talk all about licensing. Okay, toy people, Ajel Wade here and welcome back to another episode of Making It in the Toy Industry. This is a weekly podcast brought to you by thetoycoach.com. Now, at the time of the recording that you're about to hear, the Festival of Licensing is in full swing and will be actually continuing until October 29th. If you don't know what the Festival of Licensing is, or you just want to learn a little bit more about it, then you are in the right place and listening to the right episode. Today, I will be joined by Amanda Cialetti, the Event and Content Director of Global Licensing Group at Informa Markets. Amanda oversees Licensed Global Magazine, which is the leading news resource for everything you need to know about brand licensing. Amanda has worked in licensing for almost a decade and is joining us here on the show today to talk about the Festival of Licensing, which is an online event running from October 6th to October 29th. Let's dive right into the interview. Welcome to the show, Amanda. Thank you, Ajel. It's nice to be here. Oh, it's so great to have you here. I'm really excited to talk about licensing with you. Um, And just before we started this, I feel you brought up a really great point. The Festival of Licensing, which is an opportunity for people to connect and make brand deals and make new connections. It's free right now. Yes, absolutely. It's free to attend. Um, So get in there, register and take a look around. It should be the first thing anybody does who is interested in the business of brand licensing. Um, Take a peek. It's um, what could it hurt? And you said it's going to become a paid event soon. So the um, the event is framed where it's um, marketed by territory. So last week, which was um, for us as we're recording this, the week of October um, 5th, that was the Festival of Licensing Europe section. And that was meant to replace our, um, unfortunately, our Brand Licensing Europe event, which is our large physical trade show that connects Europe um, for the brand licensing world. And that unfortunately couldn't trade um, physically. So we created Festival of Licensing that kind of kicked off on that timeline. Uh, Next week um, in our timeline, which is October um, 14th and 15th, is the Asia Week, where we're, um, which is being powered by our Brands Licensing Expo Shanghai and Licensing Expo Japan. Um, And then the third week is uh, the Americas Week, powered by Licensing Expo. And the fourth week is the pay section, which is um, Licensing Leadership Summit. And it's our C-level and executive level conference. It's a small, intimate event 
meant to drive really high level, thought provoking, strategically led content for um, for true decision makers in the brand licensing business. So I just want everyone to know that this means that you can attend the festival for free and make connections up until the 22nd. And you better take advantage of this because we're getting this episode out early. So, you know, in advance and you can take advantage of this amazing opportunity. Okay. So Amanda, now that we, everyone knows that this is a super important episode <laughs> that they need to listen to all the little bits <laughs> tell us about the festival of licensing, let's start off and just talk a little bit about you. I'm really curious about your job, like what you do as an events director. So what's your day to day like? Thanks for asking. So it's, um, I, I'm focused on all things content and whether that manifests itself as our media brand, Licensed Global Magazine, and um, that's a daily newsletter and a magazine and a podcast itself, um, Licensing Mixtape. Oh, that's <laughs> um, <cute. laughs> Yeah, so, um, so I oversee that media brand and that's um, focused on everything brand licensing. And then the events that flow out of our global licensing group. So um, Licensing Leadership Summit and licensing expo in particular are my focuses, um, as well as festival of licensing, which is what we are, our virtual pivot that we're currently in. Um, what that means on a day to day is a lot of content generation, a lot of networking, talking to um, people in the industry, getting insight, um, and and making that insight um, actionable through events and content and publishing. That's great. That's a fun job content all day and coronavirus must have been like just put your job into overdrive it has i mean for all of us it, anybody in the um event and content world it's it's definitely been some um it's been a year of lots of of learnings and lessons and quick quick pivots but uh i think you know, I, I'm looking, I'm finding silver linings wherever we can. And the fact that we're getting to do these awesome events and, you know, change the focus into, into something that's relevant for today's audience is what it's all about. Yes. I love it. Okay. What is the Festival of Licensing? Festival of Licensing is a month long celebration of all things brand licensing. So anything that is, um, you know, tied to the business of, of extending an IP from, from concept to shelf. That's what you can find in um, the Festival of Licensing. It's um, a month of networking and doing deals and making connections and having some great, excellent conversations that are centered around some real deep content that's available in our platform. Um, and it's, it's, about, it's about bringing the industry together. Um, so that we can we can continue to be as strong as we were pre-pandemic. You say it's it's for networking. What exactly does networking look like in this virtual space? So we've created a lot of different spaces to network. We have a matchmaking um, a matchmaking platform that underpins the entire event, which allows you to um, do similar to what you would do in the physical space which is, you know, seek out connections, find partners that are relevant to you, make those connections and set a, uh, set a Zoom meeting um, and, and connect with them over, you know, from the comfort of your own home in this instance. Um, it's, you know, the business of licensing is a relationship-based business. So making those connections is essential to being able to function. And that's what this event is really meant to serve from a networking perspective, right? It's helping you perpetuate those connections, create even more and expand your universe. I did attend licensing week virtual. So I do oh, know the matchmaking service. Yeah, it was awesome. Good. But I Good. just want you to, to share with like, what would you say, how do you make a successful first connection using your matchmaking service? You use it is how you do it. Not, <laughs> I, honestly, I think it's it's such a basic concept, but I think that some you know that that maybe some people get um, get intimidated by reaching out in certain right. instances. And my advice is, you never know until you try um, and use it. Use exhaust the system as much as humanly possible because that's where you're going to get your ROI. And you can see it. You can see it happening in the quality of meetings. Um, I, I've been using it, um, which has been great to make connections with people I might not 
not get the chance to in a physical setting or have, you know, to expand the relationships I don't already hold. And it's been fantastic. It's been really fun because I'm, you know, you never know who's going to come in. Um, there's, you can reach out to specific people by category or by company, but then you can also turn on this exhibitor, um, or this meeting drop-in function, which has been really fun because all of a sudden you'll get a ping. Somebody's there waiting for you and you let them into the room and you're having a chat with someone you would never expect. Similar to like in the physical space where maybe you'd walk up to a booth or a stand at a trade show and see if somebody's available to take a meeting. It's that same concept. Okay, but... wait, hold on, hold on. I got questions. <laughs> I need to clarify some things because I've already been in this in this platform. I didn't see anything about this open meeting room. Hold on. Okay. Yes. So first, first things first. I know this, but I want you to share this with the listeners. Um, what happens when somebody uses your matchmaking service and sends a message to someone they want to connect with? What happens on the other end? So they'll get a they'll get a message and they'll either be able to accept or decline the meeting based on the relevancy to them. So they get an email. They'll get a they'll get a ping. Yeah, an email. Okay. Um, the drop in room though is some something so separate. So like in in the right hand corner of the platform, there's um there's a menu drop down. And there you select drop in room. And it basically allows you to turn on the platform and let people know that you're there, you're ready to network. And anybody who is um is interested in speaking with you can just drop in and, and take your, you know, your quote unquote office hours. What I'm logging in right now. <laughs> That's great. I did not know that. That's an amazing feature. Love it. It's fun. It's been fun. So who would you say could attend or should attend the li- the festival of licensing? Anybody who is interested in either taking a product and um, extending it and finding new reach at retail. So let's say um, you've got a great idea. You've got an invention you're launching, a toy property you're launching, um, or to- toy product rather you're launching. And you want to get some extra muscle behind it by attaching a known brand to that. Mm-hmm. Um, you should be at festival of licensing. Ooh, let's, you hear let's, that MIDI listeners. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> let's say you're launching a new concept, right? A new IP. Um, and you want to find a way to find a partner for that, whether it's on the product side or on the distribution side, right. you want to be at festival of licensing. Um, what about if you're looking to see what your competition's up to or what other companies are up to or what's going on? Um, with trends in the industry. And the great thing about licensing is it's a horizontal that crosses all the best verticals out there, right? So entertainment, fashion, sports, toys, novelties, um, corporate brands, uh, food and beverage, like everything, basically the business of shopping and pop culture. Um, You want to be there to check it out and get some insight. If If you're just in the initial phases and don't know where to start, this is also a great opportunity because there's no cost to you. So you can get in there and learn. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And there's some great education in there through our partnership with uh, Licensing International, which is our association partner. Um, they've got some great 101 content in there that that can help out those that are just beginning their journey as well. What percentage of your exhibitors are IPs versus like manufacturers? So our exhibitors are mostly the the brand owners, Mm -hmm. um, the IP holders, and the attendees are largely retailers, manufacturers, licensees, um, and inventors. Um, But that mix is evolving, and um, more licensees are actually joining on to our our show floor, our physical show floor. We've had um, one of the biggest ones, Funko, um, is a big exhibitor at licensing expo. Um, we've got, um, we've got a ton of them on the, um, FOL floor. I'm looking right now at, at BioWorld, for example, great, great company with a lot of really cool, um, licenses they hold, but they're definitely predominantly a licensee. Um, there's quite a bit on here. So if somebody's listening and they're thinking like, oh man, I didn't know my IP should be here as an exhibitor. Is it too late? How much is it? What do they have to do? head over to festivaloflicensing.com, which is our interest page. And it will, um, it'll funnel you over to, um, to register your interest. It'll funnel you over to a salesperson. They'll get in touch with you. And 
let you know how you can hook into our universe in one way, shape or form. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. How do you think this virtual event is different from the in-person event? Give me like the pros and the cons. What do you like? What do you not like? Oh gosh, that's so hard. Um, what I'm going to start with the fact that, you know, we've all been home for what, seven months now. And, um, and we're so lucky it's 2020, right? We're so lucky we have the internet to connect. We're so lucky we have platforms like podcasts and Teams and Zoom and Skype and all of these ways that are allowing us to facilitate continuing business, right? We're able to see each other and talk to each other and communicate still. However, um, you know, it's still isolating, right? There, right. Nothing will replace physical connections and the physical experience and the energy you get of being in the presence of human beings, celebrating, doing business, um, having a drink with them or a dinner or a coffee. Um, none of that ever gets replaced. Right. Um, and those are lasting relationships you create. However, the, the, the virtual thing, the virtual piece is, so exciting because we can do it now, right? Like we are able to connect and, and create this platform where you can um, have those connections still in a time when it just being together isn't possible. So um, I'd say that, that I love the physical. Um, I love getting to travel. I think I, I miss it. I don't know if you do, <laughs> but I, I definitely miss it. And yeah, I miss um, it big time. I know I was just lamenting the other day. I'm like, you know, I really could sit on a plane right now. I, you know, honestly, I did so much travel right before this. I'm so glad I did. Like I was, I was everywhere. It was great. I and know. I, if I hadn't, I would feel like I'm going insane now, but now I'm like, it's okay. I, I did. I did my fair share. It's okay. <laughs> I felt that I felt that way until about a month and a half ago. And <laughs> I was like, you know what? I should be, I should be in Europe right now. Oh and um, I kind of missed that. I'm fine oh. with it. Yeah. I'm fine with it, but, right. um, but I'm glad things like this exist and that we've been able to create this outlet for everyone to connect virtually and in a safe place where it's, you know, possible to do so and to continue this business that we all love, you know? Yeah. How would you say the licensing business is doing since the pandemic? What are you seeing? We're seeing a lot of adjustments. You know, um, everybody is, it's been a great equalizer, right? We're all in the same boat we're all having to recreate strategies based on on new patterns that are emerging and new consumer behaviors and um, new new capabilities. You know, the supply chain was disrupted for a while um, at the beginning of the year and it's it is returning, but that had a knock-on effect. The entertainment industry, which is a big component of um, of licensed products mm -hmm. that's been disrupted. Of course you follow, you know, if you follow the news, you see that. And so there's, there's innovation that's happening though, because of that all over the place. And that I would say is the most energizing. And again, the silver lining that I keep trying to find, which is the fact that like, we're, well, we're kind of looking at at some major shifts that are happening, there's reinvention happening all over the place across every single vertical. Yeah. Oh, that's great. It's very true. Very true. People may be shopping a little differently or a little bit, you know, their habits may have changed slightly, but they're still shopping. Entertainment is still being consumed. I'd argue even more so than ever before. There's opportunities all over the place. It's just that reorganizing priorities is is what I see happening at at the fundamental level right now. So for my listeners specifically, even you kind of answered this, but I like to be really direct. Um, is this really a show where maybe toy inventors or toy entrepreneurs that are small time might find some value in forming some new relationships or partnerships? I definitely would think so and hope so. Um, it's, it, you know, it's a great place for you as an inventor or a upstart creator to get out there and see what brands make sense for you to attach your product to, right? Or what, what innovations are happening in the space or what's coming down the pike. The thing about licensing is that um, in a traditional world, it's about a 18 month cycle, right? So from, from IP, 
to all the way down to getting your product on a shelf. And that is one of the innovations that's happening, right? Speed to market is shifting all the time. And it's definitely uh, increasing now with, with the different needs that are happening. But, um, but it's always important to be out there and check out what everybody's doing, what's going on, what new things are coming down the pike, um, what you can expect to do to create, to improve your product, to make your product stand out from the rest and to understand where the trends are because that's what you need to be doing. Look into the future. And you think that's something that people can gather with all the content that you guys put together? Tons of content. I think yeah. there's <laughs> insight There's insight to be gleaned from whatever angle you're coming at it from. So awesome. if, you're, if you're a newbie, there's content for you to kind of learn about the space. And if you're a seasoned, uh, seasoned, you know, professional, there's content there for you too. Um, no matter what you're interested in. I mean, you have a toy, but what brand are you going to attach to that? Is it going to be, you know, is the latest animation or is it going to be an art property? Is it going to be a publishing property? We've got it. I did see a lot of articles about illustrators and artists going to um, your shows. I'm curious, like, do you see a lot of success for artists and illustrators at shows like these? Oh, definitely. Art and design is a massive category for us. And it's Mm -hmm. one that's, um, that's really well served on the exhibitor side. Right. Um, it's a great place for, um, for new, uh, new entrants into the licensing world to start with, because there's so much great, um, so many great artists out there and illustrators out there that are so creative. It was such beautiful, um, work that just is like begging to be on, on something at retail. Right. Yeah. Yeah. When you first started, you were telling us how this show is actually broken up into weeks. And I know that this show, like you said, normally you'd be in Europe, but what do you see now? Has it really become global and it's just become basically another licensing week for everyone? So we have the global licensing group is comprised of um, multiple shows around the world. We have brand licensing Europe, mm-hmm. which um, which is our London based event that serves you know, the pan-European market. Mm -hmm. We have Licensing Expo Shanghai, which is based in Shanghai, China, and serves um, that market. Um, We have Licensing Expo Japan, um, based in Tokyo, and then Licensing Expo um, Vegas, which is our North America-based event, but that, that also serves all the markets. So this festival is bringing together all of those brands, plus our leadership summit and, and Licensed Global Magazine, and wrapping it up into one big month-long event because of the fact that that some of those shows were unable to trade. Mm-hmm. Um, Shanghai is able to physically, but unfortunately, the rest of the world isn't able to travel there <laughs> right. like you would have, right? Yeah. So, um, so this is meant to kind of fill that gap, and and similarly in in Europe and and, um, North America. I love it. How, how, can you tell me how many people you're seeing log in or register for this event? It's changing all the time. Um, I can tell you that, uh, as of, and, and based on when this is, this will air, it'll change again. Right. But we're, we've definitely hit our mark. We're, we're doing really well. Um, we're super, super pleased with, um, with the turnout and it's looking, it's pacing exactly like our physical shows right now, if not wow. better. So that's great. That's yeah. And what are you seeing in the future? Do you think that there's going to be more virtual events or what are, you, what are you foreseeing? I think there's a hunger for physical that just, it just, it's irreplaceable, right? Um, but that being said, virtual absolutely has a space. Virtual has made, um, you know, you know, I can't imagine us going back and not having some element of virtual in, in what we do. And, um, you know, we've worked really hard this year on creating some, some events, virtual events that resonate. So I can't imagine us not taking those learnings and, um, and doing something with that and, and creating, creating more of a space for it. How it manifests itself is, you know, we're still in the ideating phase all of this, everything going virtual is that it's almost like an, like you said, like an evening of the playing field, an opportunity for the small guys who maybe couldn't afford to travel globally to all these shows and meet with all these people. They have an opportunity to start new relationships. Do you, do you believe that too, that this is, this 
change in the world as a global change where everything's kind of shifting online out of need is really making a huge opportunity for people just starting out? Yeah. I mean, why not? Right. I keep saying that the pandemic has, has been, and, and I'm not the only one to say it. There, it. There's a lot of rhetoric out there about it. It is a great equalizer. Um, it's, it's creating a playing field that looks a lot different than it did last year. Right. And there is a lot of space for people that have new ideas that have innovative ideas um, for people that are able to pivot and and build a business quickly whereas maybe some other companies that that are larger have different priorities they have to take into account right yeah um there's certainly opportunity out there I, I can't imagine there isn't but my final question for you is a big one it's what do you think that people need to pay attention to more or do differently to have success in an online show versus an in-person show I think it's important to give it the same amount of energy and attention you would in a physical space. Block out that time and dive in and use the platform. You know, at a at a physical show, you're a captive audience, right? You would be there for three days, four days, five days, whatever it is. And you'd be walking around, you'd be taking looks at things, you would see something that catches your eye, you know, in passing, right? Or you'd run into a friend um, or a, a colleague or or whatever, um, getting coffee or in the bar or whatever. And so those are the types of things that you're going to have to recreate in the platform, right? So take a look around, explore the different exhibitor booths. You know, there's um, everybody from Penguin to Hasbro, Mattel, Pokemon, Viacom, um, big agencies like CAA, GBG, and IMG, um, you know, new innovative um, companies like Crunchyroll or Riot Games, um, Smiley Company, NFL, I mean, big, big companies here that to take a look at, but there's also new upstarts too. So you need to be just peeking in and seeing what they've got going on and, and watching the videos that um, these exhibitors post and that the content that we create and you know, take a look at the trends and um, really, you know, treat it like you would a physical event, um, just from the comfort of your own home, maybe in your best sweats. <laughs> I love that. I, you have to click around. I agree. Cause I didn't even know about this meeting, pinging, dropping in and uh, office hours. You've got to click every single button and take full advantage oh, yeah. of this. And I, I, oh, yeah. I but I'm sure the education part is even bigger. I haven't found that yet, but one day I'll get there. <laughs> I'll get well, there. and then, and then, um, I would ask you to take some time and do some of the fun stuff too. Cause we have, um, Hasbro happy hours, which has oh, been I really saw cool. that. Yeah. It's been really fun. Right. That, um, tunes and trivial pursuit they did, um, in the Europe week, they did a really great, um, mini concert and trivial pursuit games. We've got some great like community and in our community and wellbeing program of sponsored by Viacom. We have some great um, exercise type like events, you know, so you could do an MT MTV themed workout right. um, or like SpongeBob yoga. <laughs> oh my gosh. And I mean, who doesn't want to do SpongeBob yoga? That sounds hilarious. Oh, that's so great. I love it. And I just, I mean, I just want to explain to people a little bit. When you go to this website, you can search by licensee, you can search by brand. And they even, I feel like the, the website's even designed for people that, our first timers, because it doesn't just say licensee. It says licensee parentheses manufacturer. Like it really breaks it down for you. It does. You can, you can search by, by everything. And based on the type of profile you have, you can, you get more um, opportunities, right? I definitely encourage you to get in there and, and just peek around and click. Click, click, click. And you have like a virtual uh, business card, right? So that when you're visiting exhibitors, you can share your business card with them, kind of like a slide into the DMs, but subtle. Yes, yes, exactly. Thank you for pointing that out. It's true. I share my virtual business card all over the place and um, keep telling everybody like, who uses a phone anymore? Just email me or yes. like you said, find me on LinkedIn. Seriously, people call me and I think there's something wrong. Like, what what are you calling me for? <laughs> <laughs> what emergency is it? What, what did I do? Yeah, what's, what happened? <laughs> All right, so to close out, why don't you tell us about some of the big names that are gonna be at this event? 
So um, from a toy perspective, we've got some really great ones. We've got Hasbro. We've got Mattel. We have Chazwares. We have Funko. We have um, Asmodee, which is a great game company. We have um, games are hot right now, like physical games, um, analog games, huge. We've got Ubisoft. Um, and we've got interesting brands, too, that I think toy companies should be looking at, like Natural History Museum, for example. You have Discovery. We've got some great agents that represent tons of brands, um, like CAA, GBG, like IMG, like um, Firefly, uh, like Rocket Licensing. There's there's so many opportunities out there. I think that there's something literally for everybody. Right. I mean, I just want people to go in and make sure you fill out your full profile. There's so many levels. You got to fill out your availability and your interest and who you are. Like, just get it all in there. Because from my experience, the last show, like, it all matters. People are checking. It, you, they'll decide whether they're comfortable to meet with you based on the information you put in there. So just show up fully and completely and showcase what you have to offer the attendees to the show. Absolutely. Um, and take advantage. I mean, you know, it's it's there for you. It's free to register. Amazing. Use it and abuse it. Please come take a look around. Say hi to me. I'll be uh, I'll be available in the, uh, you know, free drop in area. and. Um, come check out Licensed Global Stuff. And for all of the links to contact, um, to reach out to the Festival of Licensing, if you want to maybe exhibit or just attend, all the links are going to be in the show notes, um, thetoycoach.com forward slash 39. Okay, so to to contact Amanda, when you register for Festival of licensing. You'll be able to find her um, in the platform. So if you want to contact her, you're going to have to get involved with this show. So find all of the links uh, at this podcast episode page. And I'm so glad you came on the show today, Amanda. Thank you so much for sharing everything about the Festival of Licensing. Thank you so much for having me. It's been really fun. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Take care. You too. Okay, toy people. There you have it. My interview with Amanda Cioletti. If you aren't already signed up for the Festival of Licensing, then what are you waiting for? It is free. There is still time to join the event for free and take advantage of all of the educational content that Amanda and the team over at Global Licensing Group at Informa Markets has made for us. So if you think you might have a valuable IP or even an idea for an IP, visiting this show for free right now is a great way to learn a little bit more about the licensing market and who the players are from both the licensee and the licensor side. All right, so if you are all excited and ready to go start out in the licensing world because of this episode, head over to thetoycoach.com forward slash 39, and I'm going to give you all of the links to sign up for this show while it's still free. Did you guys know that this podcast has a Facebook group? Well, it does, and I'd love to have you join. Now, the best part of being in this Facebook group is that I often feature toy products of our Facebook group members on this podcast. So if you would like your ready for sale toy product mentioned at the end of a MIDI podcast episode, then head over to Facebook and search for Making It in the Toy Industry podcast community. If you can't remember all that, just head over to thetoycoach.com forward slash 39 and grab the link and join today. I would love to be able to communicate with you a little bit more and share some of the work you're working on. Now, thank you so much for listening to today's episode. I know you have many options of podcasts out there that you can listen to and that your time is extremely valuable. So it means the world to me that you chose to spend your time listening to this one. I would love it if you would subscribe to this podcast if you haven't already. And if you love us, leave us a review on iTunes. I get email alerts when there is a new podcast review and every review really re-energizes me to provide valuable content for you each and every week. So until next week, I'll see you later, toy people. Thanks for listening to Making It in the Toy Industry podcast with Agile Wade. Head over to thetoycoach.com for more information, tips, and advice. 
Hey, are you an aspiring toy inventor or toy entrepreneur? Then you should check out Toy Creators Academy, the first of its kind online program designed to help you develop and pitch your toy ideas. Head over to toycreatorsacademy.com to learn more.